entrepreneurs, I am Elise Smith, your faith-based business coach, and you are tuned in to Divinely Driven Results on Transformation Talk Radio, where you learn and implement divine strategies for real results in your business. Thanks for joining us today. We are going to talk about how having one business meeting with a particular CEO is going to be able to change your business and your life. So I want you to think about as we're going through the show today, what can you accomplish by partnering with God? A lot of times we really compartmentalize our lives. We have our life over here, our church life here, and maybe our business over here. And the issue with that is that we might have a really good relationship with God in our personal life, but how are we extending that into our business to be able to really get that guidance to build the Lord's business, not just the world's business? So I'm sure that a lot of us, um, myself included, when I first got started, we use God more as a consultant than a partner. So tell me if this sounds familiar for you. Things are going pretty well in your business. You've got a few customers or clients coming in um, and you're feeling pretty confident about how things are going. You can do it on your own and you're proud of that fact. But slowly over time, even just over a couple of months, that doesn't seem to be working anymore. What you did last month for sales isn't bringing in the revenue you thought that it would this month. So what do we do? We hit our knees. We say, God, please help me to get out of this slump. I don't know what to do, right? And, and it, we're all human, we do that. So give yourself a little grace, ladies, if you're doing that. Um, but there is a better way, and that is partnering with God. So as opposed to coming to him with catastrophic things where, you know, we've tried everything we can do and then we take it to the Lord as almost a last result, we want to go to him first. And that's why I'm so excited to be able to give you the exact steps to have very powerful business meetings with God later on. But first, I want you to think about this phrase. God wouldn't give you a dream in your heart that he wasn't willing to give you everything to make it come true. How much do you believe in that, ladies? Let me say that again. God wouldn't give you a dream in your heart if he wasn't willing to give you everything to make it come true. So there's two pieces to this part. One is how much do you believe that your business and your goals are God-driven? How much do you believe that God really put that in your heart so that you can serve others with that dream? So I'm going to get into all of that of how I know for a fact that I am doing my sole purpose um, in the next episode. So you'll have to tune into that one. But this question I want to focus on today is the second part of that phrase. And that is, how much do you truly believe that God is going to give you everything you need to make it come true? And not only is he going to give you everything, but that he will give you everything. Sometimes it's hard for us to have a goal or a dream and feel 100% aligned with God all the time. But I have an amazing story with that. <laughs> so one day, um, I was having a really hard time getting my business off the ground. Uh, you, you guys probably know the feeling. It's where you pour your heart and soul and energy into your business, and it just doesn't seem to be producing the way you want it to. So this particular day, I was talking to my very wise husband, <laughs> and um, I hated to admit it, but I told him that I honestly didn't believe that God wanted to bless me with the goal that I was going for right then. That was hard to admit. I said to him, you know, maybe he wants something smaller for me. Maybe I'm, you know, have too big of a dream. Or, this one hurts, maybe I should just be content with what I have. Does that sound familiar for any of you guys? Yeah, I think it's pretty common for us to feel that way sometimes. But he taught me a very, very powerful lesson. He said, Elise, when has God ever given you the minimum in your life? Ladypreneurs, I want you to think about that question for you. When has God ever given you just the minimum when you've asked for it, right? I looked back on my life and I was amazed and so incredibly blessed with everything that God had given me because it wasn't just the minimum like I was afraid he would give me. It was so much more than I could possibly even imagine. 
even though sometimes I didn't understand his plan exactly for me or what he was doing, looking back on it, it was always way more than I could have thought of for myself. So I want you to remember that as you're going for your goals and dreams, that they are from God and that he will give you everything you need to accomplish that. It's just one step at a time. So, um, and my husband also helped me to realize that God doesn't change. So if he's given you everything that you've needed in the past to be able to get you to where you are now, and he has never given you minimums, then why would he start now? How powerful is that, ladies? I love it. So I think about the scripture, Malachi um, chapter 3, verse 10. And this is about tithing, but we can absolutely apply it to this situation as well. It says, Prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Who wants the windows of heaven to open up for them and to be able to receive that in such an incredible way. And we can prove God in our own way as well with our business. And that is by expecting that he will help us by aligning our will to his and by working for it because you can't reap what you don't sow, right? Perfect. Okay, so now we've covered all of this here. We are going to take just a short break. And when we come back, you are going to receive the exact steps to have these powerful business meetings with God, your new CEO. And you're also going to get a great tool at the end. So make sure you come back because you are not going to want to miss this.
Welcome back, everyone. So as we've been talking, first off, before we go into business meetings with God, we have to understand that he is there for us 100%. Um, and remember that phrase, God wouldn't give you a dream in your heart that he wasn't willing to give you everything to make it come true. So God as your CEO, right? How better of a partner could we possibly have compared to God as our CEO? When we don't know what to say to a prospect, he knows, and he can feed you exactly what to say to help that person in whatever way is needed. When we don't know what we should have for a sales process, we're completely lost on that part. He knows the exact steps that we need to take to be able to find those people who are praying for us to find them. And I don't care if your business is small or large or that you feel like you make a huge difference or, or a very small difference because you're selling something small. It doesn't matter. Ladies, we are all doing the Lord's work. And I want you to really think about that because a lot of times doubt and fear comes into our mind because we think, well, if I'm getting paid, then I'm not really doing the Lord's work right? <laughs> and that one sometimes is a hard one to get over, but the fact of the matter is, is that you are serving your fellow man. You are helping them with whatever it is that you offer, because we're offering so much more than just a trinket or a vitamin or, you know, coaching services, whatever that is for you. We're offering a chance to be able to make a change in their life and to better their life even with a small product. So don't ever think that just because you are getting paid for it doesn't mean it isn't serving the Lord and your fellow man, because it absolutely is. It's serving them and it's also allowing you to step into your greatness, which is going to allow other people and encourage and inspire other people to do the same. So God just gets to bless both of us, one with us earning money and the opportunity to serve our fellow man and the other person because we are serving them. I think it's pretty cool how God does that. <laughs> so think about God as your CEO. What does that look like for you? Um, so I want you to start thinking of these five questions or these five points to be able to have amazingly powerful business meetings with God. So one is ask a specific question. Have you been praying, and we all do this, so don't worry. <laughs> Have you been praying, God, please help me to find clients or customers, right? Or please send me clients or customers, or help me to achieve this goal. Now, those aren't bad things to say, but when we don't ask a question, then we don't get an answer. Or if we ask a vague question, we're going to get a vague answer, which might be sometimes why you're scratching your head saying, I don't understand why I'm not getting any, any inspiration or revelation from God. It's because a lot of times we're not asking a specific question. So I want you to think about a specific question you have and that you want to have help with in your business right now. Think about it for just a second. What is that one thing that's kind of been nagging you or that one thing that you feel like you could really use help on? And make sure it's a specific question. We're going to just start with one. Got it? Okay, perfect. So now that you've got your specific question, we want to make sure that we're aligning our will with God's and not the other way around. Because sometimes when we pray, <laughs> we do the other way around where we're trying to get God's will to align with us. But we want to align our will with God's. So ask a very specific question. And if you don't know what to ask, the beauty of it is that you can ask him. Ask him, what should I be asking you? What should I be focusing on? What is that question that I need to know the answer for? And he will tell you. So first step, as we just talked about, is ask a specific question. Step number two, study it out. Our minds are designed such that when we give it a question or a problem, it will do everything to be able to solve that, which isn't so convenient when you're up at midnight trying to get your brain to shut up because <laughs> you're trying to solve a problem, right? Um, but use this incredible blessing as an advantage to you by guiding it 
And what we can do with that is that we're going to study it out. So we're going to study in the scriptures or good books, or um, we're going to take it to other people that maybe have been through that situation so that we can get their advice. There's a lot of different ways to study it out. Um, look up the question that you have on Google. Google's amazing, right? <laughs> so start studying it out and start looking for those solutions because we all know that what we focus on expands or from a scriptural standpoint, what we ask we shall receive, right? And so I know that this is to be true, guys. So make sure you're studying it out. We are having weekly meetings with God so that you can come up with that question maybe on a Monday or Sunday or Saturday, whatever that looks like for you. And then thinking about it, studying about it, and having that conversation with God throughout the entire week so that you do get that powerful answer by the end of that week. Very, very strong, guys. Awesome. Okay, so what you're going to do is you are going to guide your mind that's solving that problem by feeding it, by studying everything you can about it. And I would encourage you to brainstorm with God. This is such a fun opportunity, guys. What you do is you take turns coming up with some solutions or answers. And I know that sounds a little funny because God's not like right there in the room across the table from you, even though he really is. Um, but it may not feel like that sometimes. So what you do is you start writing down every solution that you possibly have for that question. Every answer, every idea, every impression. And you go until you hit 20. Um, the idea is, is that you're not going to, like the first five or 10 that you come up with, that's stuff you already had in your head. That's not brand new stuff, but you're going to keep brainstorming until you get to 20. And that's because when you get past that first five or 10, where it's all already in your head, then your mind is going to start to open to other possibilities. So push yourself to get to 20 and ask God all the way through that whole session of, you know, help me, actually, we're going to turn into a specific question. What is the answer to this question? What is the answer to this problem? And you're going to feel or hear or see whatever that looks like for you, God's answer for you as well. So get to 20 is the key for brainstorming with God. Okay, so we've got step number one, which we just talked about, is asking a specific question. Number two, once you have that specific question, you're going to study it out, study around that specific question. Number three is you're going to document your impressions. Oh my heavens, ladies, when you start this process, you're going to receive so many solutions and so many answers to what you have been looking for. You're going to move from a scarcity mindset of thinking that there isn't, there, there's no way to solve this problem to having so many different ways to solve this problem that it might get a little overwhelming. So what we want to do is we want to document those impressions. So in a journal or a great tool I'll tell you about here in a minute, um, or, you know, whatever you use to document, maybe you type it out on your computer, whatever that is, I'd encourage you to have something that you have with you at all times. So I personally use OneNote on my phone because I love it and I can take my thoughts and my notes anywhere I want to. Um, and I also use this tool <laughs> that you can bring on your phone or on the computer as well. But make sure you have a place to document them because the fact of the matter is, is that if we don't document what God gives us, then it can erase from our minds so quickly. Um, in fact, <laughs> I have an amazing story about that. Um, so when I first started my coaching business, I was asking God, what should my coaching program look like? What should it be about? Because, you know, when I first started, I just kind of coached people around business, but it was, what do you want to talk about today? Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> there wasn't a lot of structure. And so I was praying. I said, God, please, um, it was the specific question, what should my coaching program be? Well, I got the answer at a very unexpected time. <laughs> So I was, I was praying about it. I was studying it out for a good few days and then 3 a.m. on like a Monday, <laughs> um, I got the answer laid out 100%. It was amazing, ladies. I, as I was laying there in bed, I could see, okay, this is your first session. This is your second session. And these are the whole points of, you know, the program that you're going to be making. And, and I said God, to God, I was like, oh, thanks so much. This is beautiful. I'm so excited to get started on this. I'll tackle it in the morning. <laughs> well, I can tell you for sure that God didn't like that. And so he basically said, no, you're going to get up and start writing your program right now. 
and I have never really been a morning person and I'm getting there, um, but that was hard for me. So I did, I followed what the Lord's prompting was and I took the next three hours building out my coaching program. And what is so neat about that is that I got the exact answer I was looking for. And I know for a fact that my coaching program is divine just from how it came about. So pretty neat. So don't let those ideas and those thoughts and those impressions slip away from you. Make sure you are documenting them somewhere because the adversary knows how powerful the impressions and thoughts and solutions that God has to give you. And so he's going to try and steal those away as fast as possible. So make sure you're documenting them. Okay, so we talked about step number one, which is ask a specific question. Step number two is studying it out in your mind and your heart. Step number three is document your impressions. Let's go to step number four, because this is where we're really going to start to make headway in our goals. You are going to decide and take action. So you may have a list of 25 solutions that you could go for, and not all are going to make sense for you at that time. So I want you to choose just one or two of the solutions that are on your list, and then I want you to make a plan. Because a, a dream without a goal or a deadline is just a dream. So we're going to turn it into a goal by creating a deadline for it. So what that looks like is you've got your solution and then you say, okay, how am I going to implement the solution? What steps do I need to take to be able to prepare to implement that solution? Um, what deadline am I giving myself to implement that solution? Maybe it's something you can do for that next week and then you can come back and say, this is what I did with God, right? Um, or maybe you need to plan it for further in the future because it's just not something you need to tackle right now, but you'll know. Don't let perfectionism be the enemy of greatness for you. And that is choose the one or two that you want to go for, make a plan, and just act. We don't achieve our dreams by just dreaming them. So make sure that you're taking action. That's a very, very important part. Okay, step, okay, so, so let's recap, and I'm sure you could probably recite these with me while we're saying them. So step number one is ask a specific question. Step number two is study it out. Step three is document your impressions. Step four is decide and act. And now we are on to step five, which is accounting and documenting your results. So what I mean by accounting is take it back to God, that next business meeting, because you're having these weekly, right? And so what you do is you say, okay, here are all the impressions and solutions that I got this week, and I love them. Thank you so much. We want to always show gratitude. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say, I chose to do these two things or one thing, and here was my plan to do it, and here's how it turned out. And that way you can come back to God and say, like, I did what you told me to do. This is great. And you're going to have that gratitude along with it, which is only going to make God want to give you more because you did something with it, right? Um, but the other thing is, is think about what you learned from doing that. You know, a lot of times we learn more from what failed, so to speak, <laughs> than what actually worked. Um, I think it was Thomas Edison that said, I learned how to not build a light bulb like a hundred times or whatever, right? <laughs> I, I need to memorize that quote. It's a good one. Um, but think about the things that you learned from what worked and what didn't work. Because every single time that you go to solve a problem or a solution, you're going to see what works and what doesn't work for you. And your trial and error stage of business is going to shorten by quite a bit. So be grateful for what he gives you, account for what he's given you, and check out what you learned and what didn't work for you, what you learned from what worked and what didn't work. Um, okay, so I hope that this has been super helpful for you guys today. I really hope that you're going to commit to having weekly business meetings with God because it is the most powerful tool you can possibly have in your business. But maybe you're frantically writing down these five steps or taking notes really quickly, or maybe you're driving and you can't take notes. Um, I am so excited to be able to offer you this Divinely Driven Results Business Tracker. This thing is absolutely amazing. One, it has a section for your business meetings with God so that you can write down those solutions and those questions, as well as in impressions that you get or where you're studying it from. You can write down the results and your deadline and hold yourself accountable to that. It is pretty awesome. But guys, it's not just about 
tracking the information or revelation you receive from God. Have you ever wondered how you can increase your conversion or even what your conversion rate is? Well, this tool will be able to help you do just that. It helps you to be able to partner with God and gain that divine guidance, which is exactly what you're looking for in your business right now. It also helps you to clarify or actually build out a sales process. Just like we talked about, God has that answer for you, but sometimes we need to just kind of put that into steps so that we're doing the same thing with every person and we're not wasting time and we're not wasting any energy either on our part or theirs. This tool is also going to help you to hold yourself accountable to working your business every single day, which is going to build that consistency, which builds momentum, which builds massive results in your business. And then you're going to understand your conversion rate at every step of that sales process. So maybe you're really good at, you know, having a good conversation with someone and getting them to look at your product, but maybe from the sales pitch from your, you know, selling your product all the way to closing them, you're not so great about that. Um, and that's okay. We can get better, but we can only get better if we know exactly what step we need to focus on. So this tool is going to be super powerful for you to do that. All of this helping you to achieve your revenue goals in faster time than you thought possible. So this tracker is worth over $100 very easily. Um, my clients absolutely love it. So I am actually giving you this tracker for only $9.97. So $9.97, ladies. It is an amazing deal. Um, so check out www.divinelydrivenresults.com forward slash tracker and you can get that tracker today so you can start organizing your business to be able to do the Lord's work even better. Thank you so much for watching today, ladies. I am excited that each one of you are going for your goals and dreams. Remember that God has given you that sole purpose in your business. Thanks for watching and listening and continue to do so because next time we are going to talk about why your why may not be working for you as well as you'd like it to. And really discussing how you can motivate yourself on those days you don't feel like working your business because we all have those. <laughs> so I know that as we implement these different types of strategies into our business, God is a God of order. And so we want to make sure that we are organized and orderly in our business. So these techniques that you implement and learn are absolutely going to help you to achieve your sole purpose. So thanks so much for watching and listening, ladies, and keep going for those goals and dreams, and may God bless you in that path.